I want to share something important with you. I'm not into believing wild stories, all right? I'm not the type to spend all day scrolling through social media trying to figure out what crazy things some people are saying online. I like to think of myself as a wanderer, or maybe a free spirit. The point is, I live in my van. My van and I have been on many adventures together. We travel around the country, avoiding paying rent, enjoying the freedom of van life. But there's one thing about living in a van that's not so great. Sometimes you end up parking in really strange places and you're not always sure if they're safe. About a year ago, I was traveling around the northwestern part of the country. I wanted to explore some beautiful nature spots, do some sightseeing, and enjoy the wonders of tourism. I ended up near a stunning park in Washington State. This park was tucked away, surrounded by lush greenery, and most importantly, it was perfectly legal for me to park my van there. So I decided to settle down in that spot for a while. But here's a little hint. It wasn't the best spot I could have chosen. The area itself wasn't scary or strange, it was just really remote. You could tell that not many people visited there very often. On the first night I stayed there, I decided to go for a little hike along the park's trails. It wasn't too late when I set off, maybe around 6 in the evening, so I thought it would be fine to explore a bit. I took my time walking through the trails, enjoying the beauty of nature. But by the time I returned to my van, it was already dark, maybe around 9. And let me tell you, I was really angry when I saw what had happened. All around my van, my precious belongings were scattered. My bedspread, my clothes, my books, everything was either torn up, dirty, or tossed on the ground. And the worst part? My van's doors were halfway torn off the hinges. I figured it must have been some sort of animal. But here's the thing. I couldn't think of a single animal strong enough to pull the doors off a van like that. After I finished getting mad and cursing up a storm, I started to feel really scared. I noticed that even though my stuff was all over the place, nothing was actually missing. Well, except for my mini fridge. And I'm not talking about the food inside it, I mean the whole fridge itself was gone. It was crazy. Whatever creature had been in my van not only tore up my belongings, but also grabbed my mini fridge and took off with it. Needless to say, I was really scared. I began to tidy up my belongings, gathering them from all around the van. But here's the thing. Every single item had this awful smell on them. It was beyond gross. First of all, they all reeked of pee. Not just any pee, but the kind that comes from something with a really unhealthy diet. It was disgusting. But what was even stronger than the pee smell was the stench of wet dog. It was like having a bunch of dirty wet dogs right next to me. And let me tell you, I've smelled some stinky dogs before, but this was even worse. It was awful. I thought it would be best if I packed up my things and found another place to stay. Luckily, I had some money saved up from my thrifty lifestyle. But something inside me said I should stick around a bit longer to figure out what had happened to my van. So I made the decision to spend just one more night there and leave the next day. Looking back, I realize how lucky I was to make it out of there alive. As night fell, it started to rain. It wasn't a heavy storm, but it was definitely annoying, especially with the doors missing from my van. I had a pair of binoculars in my hiking backpack, so I decided to sit in the driver's seat and keep watch just in case I needed to leave in a hurry. For a while, there wasn't much happening. I was half dozing, listening to the rain tapping on the van's windows. But then, something caught my eye. At first, I thought it was just a really tall person standing out there in the storm. Without really thinking, I called out to them. But when it turned to look at me, I saw that it wasn't a person at all. It was some sort of monster. And the craziest part? It was sitting down, and when it stood up, it must have been almost ten feet tall. I couldn't believe my eyes. This creature had tiny, beady eyes that seemed to pierce right through you. Its head was strange almost like a cone, and it was completely covered in fur from top to bottom. I know it sounds unbelievable, but I think it might have been a Sasquatch. This creature was built like a professional weightlifter, with massive bulging biceps that probably explained how it tore up my van. We stared at each other for what felt like forever, and then it started moving closer to the van. I was absolutely terrified. What else could you do in a situation like that? Stay calm? Forget it. 
I tried to start the van, but it kept stalling. It felt like I was trapped in my very own horror movie. The creature wasn't charging at me, more like cautiously creeping closer. But I wasn't taking any chances. I wanted out of there, fast. Then almost like magic, there was this huge lightning crack nearby. I couldn't see it, but it sounded like it was right on top of us. It scared me half to death, but you know what? The creature didn't like it one bit. It bolted away as fast as it could. It turns out it didn't like loud noises. After a few more tries, my van finally started. I made it out of there alive, but when I told people about what happened, nobody believed me. They thought it was just a pack of coyotes or a really strange fox. That's why I thought you might believe me. Reflecting on this memory, it feels like a tale from a far-off land, almost like a dream. But tuning into stories on this channel reassures me that what I experienced wasn't just in my head. My childhood was spent on a sprawling horse ranch in Kentucky, where my bond with these majestic animals blossomed. As I graduated from high school, I pondered my future. While many friends leaned towards becoming vets, the sterile environment of clinics didn't appeal to me. I longed for the great outdoors, where I could be closer to nature and my four-legged companions. After graduating from high school, I decided to take a gap year to explore before diving into college. While journeying across the country, my adventures led me to Yosemite National Park, where I stumbled upon an opportunity that seemed tailor-made for me. It turns out, they had a special unit called Mounted Park Rangers. Imagine my excitement. The thought of spending my days riding horses through the breathtaking landscapes of the park felt like a dream come true. I delved into the coursework required to become a law enforcement ranger, and before long I secured a position as a mounted patrol ranger at Yosemite. With my background in handling horses, a significant part of my duties revolved around their care and training. It was every bit as amazing as I had imagined it to be. The horses play a big role in many parts of the park, especially in keeping it safe and helping out in emergencies like when someone gets lost. Some of them even help teach people about nature and wildlife, and if visitors want, they can go on horseback rides through the wild parts of the park. My days would kick off bright and early, usually at six. I'd hustle over to the stables to start the day with the horses. They'd be eagerly awaiting their morning routine, looking forward to their breakfast of oats and hay. Now let me tell you about hay. It's like a big bundle of dried grass and grains that we feed to the horses. We measure it out in portions called flakes so we can make sure each horse gets just the right amount to keep them healthy and happy. One morning, I shuffled out to the stables, still half asleep, ready to start my daily routine of feeding the horses. As I began tossing hay over the fences, a sudden flurry of flapping wings startled me. Geese, of all things, were swooping and honking around the horse trough. I blinked in surprise. Geese weren't a usual sight in this part of the park, especially not in the morning. Their unexpected presence caught me off guard, but I shook off the surprise and continued my task. But something felt different. Normally, as soon as they heard the rustle of hay, the horses would trot over, eager for breakfast. But today, they remained clustered together, unmoving beneath the shelter. Curiosity peaked, I decided to investigate. Making my way over to the gate, I noticed it was held together with a makeshift wire latch, the original latch having succumbed to rust. As I approached the gate, my eyes widened in alarm. The wire latch was gone, and the gate stood slightly ajar, as if something or someone had slipped inside. My heart thudded with worry. Who could have been here before me? It was way too early for anyone else to be out in the park. Brushing aside my concerns, I turned my attention to the horses. Usually they greeted me with eager nudges and whinnies, but today they seemed on edge. I reached out to give them their usual morning nose rubs, hoping to calm their nerves, but they shied away from my touch. Puzzled, I offered them oats from my hand, but they refused to eat, their ears twitching anxiously. Meanwhile, the geese continued to loiter around the horse trough, adding to the oddness of the situation. What were they doing here in the horse corral? A shiver of unease crept down my spine as I tried to make sense of it all. 
As I stepped back through the gate, my eyes scanned the area, searching for any sign of what could have caused the disturbance. Suddenly, movement caught my attention near the edge of the stables. Something massive seemed to materialize from the landscape itself. I couldn't believe my eyes. This creature, with its towering height and massive head, resembled something out of a dinosaur storybook. Its head lacked any trace of fur, presenting a lizard-like appearance that sent a shiver down my spine. Standing on two legs, it turned to face me, its piercing yellow eyes locking onto mine. The memory of its reptilian gaze still haunts me. Its face, dominated by those intense eyes and razor-sharp teeth, is etched in my mind. I estimated it to be at least six or seven feet tall, towering over me as I stood about thirty feet away. Its skin, a strange grayish hue, appeared to be covered in scales, adding to its otherworldly appearance. When that creature locked its gaze onto me, something changed. It shifted, almost like it was surprised I had spotted it. Fear washed over me like a crashing wave, freezing me in place. My heart pounded wildly in my chest, and I've never felt such terror before or since. A strange sensation weighed down my head, a heaviness that I can't quite explain. All I knew was that this thing felt dangerous, like it meant harm. For what felt like an eternity, though it was probably only a few seconds, I stood rooted to the spot, unable to move. Then, with a surge of determination, I turned and sprinted back to the safety of the horses. My instinct was to flee to get as far away from that creature as possible, but a stronger urge pulled me back, the need to protect the animals under my care. As I reached the horses, the creature darted effortlessly up the hill behind the stables, disappearing from sight in a blur of motion. I quickly sounded the alarm, summoning other rangers to the scene. They arrived ready to give chase on horseback, but to our astonishment, the horses refused to budge, as if sensing the danger lurking beyond. I'd never seen the horses behave like that before. They outright refused to move, as if they sensed something dangerous lurking nearby, and even after the creature vanished, they wouldn't touch their food for hours. The thought of that creature prowling near my beloved horses made my stomach churn. What could it have wanted? It certainly wasn't after oats and hay. I carefully inspected each horse, relieved to find them physically unharmed, but the incident left me rattled. From then on, we made sure to lock the horses safely inside the stable at night. When I reported the encounter, the other rangers tried to convince me it was just a mountain lion or some other ordinary animal, but I knew better. There was no way that thing was anything close to normal. I want to share something that happened to me earlier this year. It was quite an experience, and I hope telling it brings some relief. My family and I spend the winter months at our lodge in Nebraska with my grandparents. It's usually peaceful there, and I always enjoy our time together. One week the weather was nice, not too much snow, and everything seemed great. But then one night something strange happened, and it was terrifying, and I still can't fully explain it. It was like nothing I've ever experienced before, but let me tell you what happened. My room in the lodge is at the top, in the attic, and I've always loved it because there's a huge bay window that opens up. I often climb out onto the roof to look at the stars, and it's never scary for me up there. So on this particular night, I'm following my usual bedtime routine. I get ready for bed, maybe sneak a snack, and then I head up to the roof. Everything starts out just fine, and I'm enjoying the quiet and the view of the stars. But then suddenly... I hear this really loud buzzing sound. It's like bugs buzzing around, but during winter there are hardly ever any bugs. It's too cold for them to be outside. As I'm sitting there, I start to wonder where this loud buzzing sound could be coming from. It's so intense that it sounds like a swarm of bugs. I'm not usually afraid of bugs, but this buzzing is making me feel uneasy. Then I realize something unsettling. The buzzing isn't coming from a swarm of bugs. It's coming from one big bug monster thing. Our cabin is part of a row of similar cabins, and they're all built the same way with similar roofs. Suddenly, I hear a loud slam on the roof next to mine, and slowly, I turn to see what's happening, and what I see is beyond anything I could have imagined. Standing there on the roof next to mine was the source of the buzzing. It was about as tall as a middle schooler, around five feet tall, but that didn't make it any less scary. 
It had a shape somewhat like a human with arms and legs, but they were covered in something strange. It looked like feathers or fur, or maybe some kind of black material that wasn't skin at all. The creature kept staring at me, making that buzzing noise like it was studying me. I was really scared. I wanted to scream, but I was also kind of frozen, trying to understand what I was seeing. It was like something out of a movie. The creature had a face that was really hard to describe, and it almost seemed like it didn't have a face at all. But it definitely had eyes. I can still picture those eyes in my head whenever I get scared or have a bad dream. They were big, red, and shiny. The moonlight made them glow. I didn't know what to do and I was frozen with fear, so I just kept watching, hoping it would go away eventually, but it didn't move. We stayed like that for what felt like forever. It was getting colder and colder, but I couldn't bring myself to move. We just kept staring at each other for at least an hour. It was like a staring contest, but way scarier. Then, like a miracle, the creature finally decided it was done staring at me. All this time, its wings had been folded against its body, almost touching the ground with their length. I had been curious about what they would look like outstretched or in flight, even though it was pretty scary to think about. When the creature spread its wings, I was shocked. They were huge, much bigger than its body, and they weren't like typical insect wings at all. Instead of being thin and transparent, its wings were made of some kind of strong, leathery material. I couldn't believe how sturdy they looked. I couldn't help but wonder what this creature was doing here and where it came from, but honestly I hope I never find out. I watched as the creature took flight, still making that sickening noise that makes me jump whenever I hear it, even if it's just a butterfly. It flew around in circles a few times and I wasn't sure if it was trying to tell me something or if it was just showing off. Once it was out of sight, I finally climbed back inside. My hands and feet were numb from the cold, and I ended up getting a cold the following week from being outside for so long. For the rest of the night I stood by the bay window, looking out. Part of me wanted to catch another glimpse of the creature, but at the same time I hoped I never saw it again. I felt a mix of emotions, disgusted, scared, curious, and confused. I never saw the creature again after that night and I never went up on the roof again either. I'm afraid that if I do, I might somehow call it back. I still don't know what it was, and maybe you don't either, but one thing's for sure, it's quite a story. As a student studying psychology at Hillside University, I find your show captivating, and I enjoy exploring various cryptid channels. It's intriguing how our minds can sometimes conjure up monsters from the darkness. Despite my interest in these topics, I've always leaned toward skepticism when it comes to legendary creatures or the supernatural. However, this past summer, something peculiar happened that has shaken my beliefs. Reflecting on the encounter, I've analyzed it repeatedly, trying to find logical explanations. But no matter how much I delve into rationalization or psychological theories, the physical evidence I stumbled upon refuses to be dismissed. Initially, I tried to convince myself that what I saw wasn't supernatural at all. Perhaps it was just a regular animal, my mind hyperactive with adrenaline, interpreting it as something demonic. However, I wasn't alone during this encounter. The companion with me described the same phenomenon with impeccable accuracy, leaving me baffled. Even though I was really scared by what I saw, I knew it was important to be careful about how we talked about it. So, I asked my friend to write down what she saw before we talked about it. I didn't want us to accidentally change each other's memories by talking about it too soon. I know it might sound nerdy, but understanding how people think is why I like listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos about cryptids. Let me give you some background information. A couple of months ago, I went to a party at a friend of a friend's house in West Philly. There, I met a nice girl from Drexel University. She was studying engineering and we really hit it off. During our conversation, she mentioned how much she loved backpacking and that she wanted to hike the entire Appalachian Trail after she finished school. Since I grew up spending a lot of time camping and enjoying the outdoors, I offered to go backpacking with her sometime. Looking back, I realize it might have been a bit strange to suggest going out into the woods alone with someone I had just met. 
but she thought it was a great idea, so we made plans to go the following weekend. I'm not from Philadelphia, so I didn't know the area very well. But I had heard about the New Jersey Pine Barrens, which weren't too far away. They were famous for being a huge stretch of wilderness, and I wanted to impress the girl I met. A casual hike on a busy trail didn't seem exciting enough. So we decided to head to southern New Jersey for what I hoped would be an awesome adventure in the Pine Barrens. At first, it felt a bit awkward being just the two of us. There was nobody else around to join in the conversation when it got quiet. But overall, I thought things were going well. We had been hiking for about three miles when I noticed a strange smell. It was like the smell of fireworks going off nearby, with a sulfur-like haze lingering in the air. She scrunched up her nose in disgust when she caught a whiff of it, too. Trying to get away from the smell, she walked past me, but suddenly, she jumped back with a startled yelp. She gazed at me with wide eyes and gestured towards the trail behind her. There, lying in the path, was a torn-up deer carcass. Drag marks in the sandy soil indicated that something had intentionally placed the body there. I figured that we must have startled whatever predator had been feeding on the deer, maybe a bear or some coyotes when we approached. We continued hiking for a few more miles and eventually set up camp. The plan was to take a different trail back to where we parked in the morning. My hiking buddy had brought along a small tent for us to sleep in. Since it was summer and the weather was warm, I didn't bother bringing my own tent. Instead, I just tied a tarp overhead in case it rained and laid out my sleeping bag underneath it. She probably would have offered to share her tent with me, but I didn't want to assume anything. After sleeping for a few hours, something stirred me awake. My skin felt tingly like I was standing in the scorching heat of the desert. The sulfur smell we encountered near the torn-up deer carcass was back, but this time it was even stronger. Breathing in felt scratchy, like I was inhaling smoke. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I noticed a shape lurking at the edge of the clearing. It was huge, standing at least seven feet tall. Its head resembled that of a horse, long and slender, atop a thin neck. I couldn't make out much of its body because my attention was immediately drawn to its piercing red eyes. My hiking partner poked her head out of her tent and asked if I could smell the sulfur too. Following my gaze, she spotted the creature by the tree and let out a gasp of disbelief. Suddenly, the creature emitted a sharp screech and launched itself into the air, unfurling bat-like wings as it ascended. In its flight, it collided with a tree branch about 20 feet above us, causing it to snap and crash down in front of our campsite. Despite my urge to leave everything behind and head back to the car immediately, I knew it would be unsafe to hike in the dark. I spent the rest of the night wide awake, unable to sleep. As soon as daylight broke, we packed up to leave. While we were on our way out, we noticed the broken branch and the imprint left in the soil where the creature had launched itself into the air. The sandy ground still retained warmth from where the creature had stood. Once upon a time, something strange happened to me. I've shared this story with friends recently, and one of them listens to your podcast. He suggested I write in to see if anyone would be interested in hearing about it. I want to start by saying I've never had any spooky experiences before. I had a normal childhood and I'm in my mid-30s now. But when I was 25, something odd occurred. After finishing college, I had trouble finding a job in the area where I studied. So I moved back in with my parents for a while. My parents had moved to a nearby town a few years earlier. They wanted a quieter life, with a one-story house because my dad's knees weren't great. The town was a bit bigger than where we used to live, but had more amenities like stores and hospitals. Their house was cozy and small, just right for them. They offered me the spare bedroom, which was mostly used for storage. It was separated from their room by the kitchen and a bathroom, so we all had some privacy. At first, I just relaxed and spent time with my parents, enjoying home-cooked meals. But eventually, I needed to focus on finding a job. I spent a lot of time in the local library, using their computers to search for job opportunities. One day, while I was taking a nap in the spare bedroom, I woke up with a strange feeling. It was like someone else was there with me. 
Opening my eyes halfway, I saw a figure in the corner of the room. They looked almost transparent, like a ghost. I blinked and rubbed my eyes, trying to wake up fully. When I looked again, the figure was still there, just standing and staring. I was scared but also curious. I didn't say anything or move, afraid that it might disappear. After a little while, the ghost faded away like mist evaporating. I didn't tell my parents about it because I thought they'd think I was joking or imagining things. But over the next few days, I saw the ghost again, always in the same spot. It never interacted with me or acknowledged my presence. This went on for a few weeks until I moved out and into an apartment nearby. Before I left, I asked my parents about the previous owners of the house. They said it was another couple, but they didn't know much about them. I didn't mention the ghost. I've never figured out why the ghost appeared or what it wanted. My parents never mentioned seeing it, so maybe it was just for me. It hasn't shown up again since then, but it made me realize that there are mysteries all around us.